This is KGW News at Sunrise. I guess it's something that happens around here a lot, but like it's something that I encounter a lot in my like daily life. Gun violence in the Rose City killed one person and injured nine others in just one night. What we know about Portland's 34th homicide. And take a look at this 10 foot deep sinkhole. It has closed part of Southeast Yamhill indefinitely. We'll walk you through the traffic impacts of this, plus what neighbors had to say about that day that the sinkhole opened. Plus. In five, four, three, two, one, launch. There it goes. <laughs> that was exciting. Success. <laughs> <laughs> up, up and away, you might say, Rod. Oh, I, I missed my chance to say that, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> well, there'll be other times, I'm sure. <laughs> Kids at iTech Preparatory School in Vancouver are behind this data collecting weather balloon. And yes, a big kid by the name of Rod Hill was there to help them send it off. <laughs> More on this mission coming up at 515. Look at all that blue sky. You yeah. had fun out there. You came back a little rosy yes. from the sun. I don't want to ruin the, the story, but the coolest part of the whole story to me is this school, Vancouver iTech Preparatory, they have a weather balloon club. <laughs> and it was that club that launched that balloon. Not a Bravo. physical club, but a group of kids that make up a club. Yeah, like a chess club, <laughs> computer club. They have a weather balloon club. Just need clarification on a Monday. Thank you very much. Here's a look outside. Wells Fargo camera. Um, so this cloud tells a story. It's actually kind of a, a remnant debris cloud, if you will from convective activity that produced some showers and thunderstorms across parts of, parts of our state last night. And there is a storm threat brewing here on the west side uh, later this afternoon into this evening. So we'll talk more about that coming up. Right now it's another warm morning for you. 64 degrees, we'll be 80 at noon. We may hit 90 today if we don't have much in the way of any cloudiness popping for potential storm development later today. We probably will. I've got us 88 at 5 p.m. That's your forecast for now. All right, Rob, thank you. Our top story this morning, a warning from Portland police about a dangerous batch of drugs circulating in the city. In the last three days, eight people have died from overdoses. Here's a list of the dates and times they happened. Six of them are likely related to fentanyl. The other two are under investigation. Police say there's evidence that people thought they were using cocaine, but it was actually blended with fentanyl. These overdoses started Friday morning when a 38-year-old man died inside an apartment building on East Burnside. The last reported overdose happened at 4.30 Sunday afternoon on North Hartman Street. Six of the eight victims were men over the age of 35. Anyone with information about any of these cases is asked to call Portland Police. And at least nine people are hurt, one dead, after several shootings in Portland this weekend. The latest one happened in Southeast just before 3.30 Sunday morning. There are a few details on this one, but we do know that a man walked into Adventist Health on Southeast Maine with non-life-threatening injuries and refused to tell officers what happened. We'll let you know if we learn more. Police also responded to a pair of triple shootings on Portland's east side over the weekend, and one of them wound up being deadly. It's the 34th homicide in Portland this year. Evan Watson has the details and spoke with one man who lives in the area. Two triple shootings in one night in Portland. Police say one man died at the hospital after being shot near a home on Northeast Killingsworth in the Cooley neighborhood. Two other shooting victims, a man and a woman, had minor injuries that were treated at the scene. A contrast to a bright and cheerful Sunday morning. Been walking out this morning, it's quiet, the sun's shining, like they're yeah, it's like a nice, feels like a nice community space a lot of the time. Grant Smith lives a block away from the other triple shooting in Portland, just after midnight Sunday. Police say three people were shot at a bar in the Lloyd District. Paramedics provided trauma care on scene at the Capitol Bar and Lounge on Northeast Broadway. I guess it's something that happens around here a lot, but like it's not something that I encounter a lot in my like daily life, you know? Um, it feels like pretty idyllic a lot of the time, so. It's kind of wild, the transition between that and this. Sunday morning, some signs of chaos could be seen inside the Capitol Bar's locked doors. Broken glasses, flipped tables, and items left behind in a hurry. Smith was surprised to learn about the shooting this morning, but says he feels safe and secure walking around his neighborhood at night. These things do happen once in a while, and like when they happen, they tend to stick in your brain a lot, but 
I don't want to let that like affect what I'm going to do on my day to day. The homicide in Northeast Portland is the city's 34th of the year. For both triple shootings, Portland police say the suspect or suspects left the scene and no immediate arrests have been made. Evan Watson, KGW News. Over the weekend, there was a vigil for a man shot and killed in the Hazelwood neighborhood six days ago. Family and friends gathered on Saturday night to remember 37-year-old Justin Jokey. Portland police say they found him dead near the intersection of Northeast 122nd and Burnside on Tuesday, May 9th. So far, no one has been arrested. 100%, especially the way it happened. It's terrible. It's getting bad out here and it needs to stop. And yeah, no, 100%. Shocking as hell. The mother of Jokey's nine-year-old son set up a GoFundMe to help pay for funeral expenses. People living near a Corvallis mosque are feeling disheartened after it was vandalized. Someone spray painted the words, Jesus loves you on its walls and pavement on Thursday. Neighbors say the mosque has been a staple in the community for more than 30 years now. And while the message itself is not hateful, the vandalism is disrespectful. That's, you know, it's a nice sentiment, but not appropriate uh, for anything that, you know, that maybe isn't in front of a church. Our news partners in Eugene have reached out to Corvallis police to ask about an investigation they have not heard back. All right, here's a look now at a few more of this morning's local headlines. We start with the Oregon Senate, which is expected to resume, uh, resume floor sessions today. Republicans staged a nine day walkout this month, claiming that bills focused on abortion rights and gun safety issues aren't written clearly enough. Then late last week, Republican leadership announced an arrangement with Democrats to suspend sessions on Friday and Saturday. So a new law voted in just last year would block any Oregon lawmaker who has 10 or more unexcused absences from running for reelection. In Portland's Multnomah Village neighborhood, the intersection at Southwest Garden Home Road and Capitol Highway will be closed all week. Starting today, cars will not be able to get into or out of Multnomah Village using Southwest Capitol Highway. Peabot says to use Southwest 40th Avenue to get to Garden Home Road instead. On Thursday, crews will also begin work on the intersection of Southwest Primrose and Capitol Highway. Keep in mind the bridge sidewalk will stay open there for walking and biking. Meanwhile, in Portland's Mount Tabor neighborhood, Southeast Jam Hill closed indefinitely at 76th Avenue because of this massive sinkhole we're showing you, which opened up on Friday. Peabot crews were working to fix it over the weekend, but before crews were able to get there, neighbors say they put out buckets and bins to warn other drivers. Absolutely, it went from six inches at 2.30, and you see what it is now. I mean, it's a crater, and it you know, took an hour and a half, but I, I think the bus is pounding on it didn't help. Peabot says that the hole is about 10 feet deep and could get even bigger. TriMet, meanwhile, says that bus line 15 will not stop between Southeast 71st and 76th until further, uh, further notice. And that's a look at some of this morning's local headlines. Well, the hot weather over the weekend was a very big change of pace from the cold, rainy start to our spring. So we posted this question on our Facebook page. What did you do to beat the heat? A lot of you sent in pictures. Let's start off with Michael. He spent his day at the coast saying it was hot there too. Ooh, looking good. Gabe was on his bike and took a picture of his shadow. He says he went on a four hour ride adding the breeze cools you off. Christy sent us a picture of her pool. Oh yeah, girl, that's the way to do it. And then finally, Deanna says she walked around Laurelhurst Park with her puppy. It looks like a lot of you got out there over the weekend, so stay tuned here on Sunrise. We're going to be reading more of your comments and showing off more of your pictures throughout the newscast. All right, Rod, uh, you talked about it. We could have a uh, record on our hands later today if we hit that 90-degree mark again. Yeah, and we all uh, ready tied, was it, I think it was Saturday morning, we only dropped down to 62, yeah. mm -hmm. which ties the record for the highest low temperature overnight all time for the month of May. So okay. records are certainly falling. We've already uh, set a whole fistful of them in terms of daily high temperature records, and that's where we begin. So this all started back on Friday when we made it to 90. You remember that day I forecasted? 87 didn't think we did 90 but we did and that was a record 93 a record Saturday 92 a record yesterday the record today I don't think we get up to 93 but we might get up to 90 and here's the deal if we make it to 90 that would be four in a row 
That would break the record all time for PDX. It goes back to 1940, those records, for the number of 90 degree days in the month of May. PDX, since we built the airport, we've never had more than three in the month of May, and that would be four in a row and four total. There's a bigger record that goes back to 1874, all the reporting sites since records began in Portland, and we've never had more than four 90 degree days. We could at 90 today for a fourth day. We could do it again later this week. So this is really becoming quite the weather story of an unusual heat uh, spell in the month of May. All right, you see the spinning kind of the, uh, the counterclockwise movement here of showers down in southern Oregon. Some weakening showers have pushed up north of uh, the gorge. There is a low center. We talked about this last week that is tracked into our area, and certainly there is the possibility of thunderstorms later today here on the west side. Likely storms developing this afternoon along the Cascades, southern, central, eastern Oregon areas. All right, here are the uh, current numbers right now. 64 in Portland. We've been down as low as 63. If 63 turns out to be the low, that will break that 62 degree mark for the warmest night all time in the month of May. 58 in Kelso, 52 in Newport. The beach has cooled off. The east wind we had over the weekend, which is why we had 92 in Seaside on Saturday, for example. That east wind is gone. So the coast, you folks will only be closer to 70 for a high today. Um, and we will lose the potential to be crazy hot here in the valley. But as I mentioned, we could still get up tonight. And here's a look at that thunderstorm threat. This is this afternoon at 230. You can see Bachelor and Mount Jefferson, big ones around Mount Hood at 430. There's a storm bouncing off of Mount Adams. Could some of these storms migrate into the valley? Here's one in Clackamas County. Absolutely they could. That would come later this afternoon into this evening. It shows you how widespread the storm activity will be across much of our state later today. I'm going 89 today. Clearly we could hit 90, 87, 88, 90, 90, 87. My favorite weather model, what they call the European, shows a cold front coming in on Sunday that would finally break the heat and much of next week looks closer to normal. Daytime highs back down closer to 70. That would make it your favorite model as well. <laughs> All right, hey, <laughs> we're going to get you outdoors coming up next for the launch of a weather balloon up in Vancouver. Of high school kids working on this project. Really quite the feat. And there she goes, as Drew said earlier in the show, up, up and away next on Sunrise. <laughs>